Headline, Government Scientists Create Genetically Modified Spider Goats to Produce Spider Silk Body Armor. Is it true? Are there really spider goats among us? Is an attack by goat web armor clad super soldiers imminent? Let's dig in and find out. Genetic engineering, or gene editing, is often seen by lay people as inherently unnatural and therefore immoral. Science fiction often depicts such experiments and stories of mad scientists creating affronts to God just to prove they can. In the popular news media, the technology is often discussed in the context of GMO controversies, the ethics and safety of genetically modified food. In 2001, a radical group that opposed genetic engineering set off a firebomb at the office of a plant geneticist at the University of Washington in an attempt to instill fear in anyone pursuing genetic engineering research. They believed the geneticist was creating mutant trees that would destroy the planet. While some of the research was involved in making genetically engineered plant tissue, the work was purely experimental and at that time was not intended to be planted in the environment. The bulk of the work was in traditional breeding to regenerate ecosystems affected by the eruption of Mount St. Helens. The geneticist continued his work unfazed and no one was injured by the fire. When genetic engineers introduce a gene from one species into the DNA of another species, that gene is called a transgene, and the resulting modified organism is called a transgenic organism. Trans meaning a gene of an organism outside that species. In the case of the quote-unquote spider goats, the transgenes are the genes that code for dragline spider silk, which are implanted into goats, making them transgenic goats. We often describe genes as being the cause of specific traits. For example, the genes for eye color cause the color of your eyes. Genes are regions of DNA that code for specific proteins, molecules that have a specific function to the organism. The sequence of DNA in the gene determines the sequence of amino acids in the protein, and the sequence of amino acids gives the shape and function of the protein. The functions and behaviors of the proteins result in the traits of the organism, for example, eye color. All genes are made of the same nucleotides, the molecules A, C, G, and T of DNA. The sequence of these nucleotides in a gene confers the sequence of amino acids in its protein. All proteins are made of different combinations of the same 20 amino acids. Every organism has genes and proteins, and those genes and proteins are all made of the same 4 nucleotides and the same 20 amino acids. The proteins in a person are made of the same amino acids as the proteins in a mosquito. The genes in a bacterium are made of the same nucleotides in the genes of a banana. It's like using the same Legos to make different things. Since all life forms use the same building blocks, it is possible to have an organism from one species express a transgene from an organism of another species. The hormone insulin is a protein in your body that is coded for by the insulin gene. Type 1 and some type 2 diabetics need to inject insulin to regulate their blood sugar. In the past, this insulin for diabetics came from slaughtered animals. The insulin genes in pigs and cows have slightly different sequences than the human insulin genes, and their insulin protein has a slightly different structure. This has sometimes caused an allergic reaction to the medication. Nowadays, insulin medicine is made in genetically modified bacteria. The genes for human insulin were inserted into bacteria in a small ring of DNA called a plasmid. In addition to their chromosomal DNA, which is the DNA in the bacterial genome used to make most of the bacteria's proteins, many bacteria can also use plasmid DNA to make proteins. The molecular machinery inside the bacteria that reads the bacterial chromosomal DNA also reads the plasmid DNA and makes human insulin which can be isolated and given to diabetics. When the bacteria divide, they copy the plasmid DNA as well, and so their progeny are also able to make insulin. Just because the bacteria have one human gene does not mean they are any less bacteria or any more human. The insulin they make is not imbued with the essence of the bacteria. There is no physical or essential property of this insulin that makes it different. It functions the same in a human body. These transgenic bacteria are made in a laboratory, but not all gene transfer is done by humans. Sometimes, this process occurs naturally. Up to 8% of the human genome, 8% of your DNA, comes from viruses. In a sense, you are part virus. 
Retroviruses are viruses that can integrate their genetic material into a host's genome, an example being HIV. At multiple points in our evolutionary history, a retrovirus integrated its genetic material into the DNA of a sperm or egg cell, and that genetic material was carried down for generations, acquiring mutations and remaining in our genome. We know this is likely because sequences of our DNA are genetically similar to existing retroviruses. Some of these virus-derived genes are actually involved in the development and function of placenta, and may have been important for the evolutionary origin of the placental mammal. This retrovirus gene may be the reason you aren't a marsupial. Other retroviral elements in our genome aren't as useful, and some are implicated in disease. The introduction of a gene from one species to another can be useful, harmful, or totally neutral. It all depends on what the gene does, how that protein interacts with other molecules in the organism, and where the gene is inserted, if it interrupts other genes. That brings us to our spider goats. What does a gene for spider silk do to a goat? Have we created a monster? A Franken goat? Why would anyone want to make a spider goat? What is a spider goat? These goats are not spider goat hybrids. They are not spider goat chimeras either. They are transgenic goats. Every cell of the goat has a full goat genome with the addition of a single spider silk gene. These transgenic goats are goats that make dragline spider silk protein in their milk. They don't have eight legs, they don't sling webs, and they don't have any spidey senses. But with a little coaxing, you might be able to steal a kiss while they hang upside down in the rain. Why is there such an interest in spider silk? The silk genes in question are from a type of spider called the golden orb weaver. These are genes for the proteins that make a particular kind of silk called dragline silk, or ampullate silk, used in the frame and radii of the orb weaver's web, as well as the dragline to catch the spider if it falls. In the silk gland, the silk protein is not spooled in a fiber. It is actually in a liquid dope solution until it is dehydrated and pulled to form the silk fibers. When you see a spider spin a web or trapeze down, you are seeing it make a silk thread from a liquid silk solution in real time. This silk is so effective that there have been cases of golden orb weavers being able to trap and eat small birds. This spider silk has a higher tensile strength than steel or kevlar per weight, and it takes a lot to break it under tension. It takes a lot more weight to break a fiber of spider silk than it does other fibers. Spider silk is also very flexible. This strong, soft, flexible, elastic material is so coveted by scientists and companies because it can be used for a variety of purposes, like medical implants, clothing, and body armor. The medical industry wants to use it for artificial ligaments and tendons. It has been shown that the body does not have an immune response to spider silk, so an implant won't cause an allergic reaction. The military wants to use it for body armor, lightweight bulletproof vests. To make these materials requires large quantities of silk fibers, however. Unlike silkworms, it is not practical to farm spiders for their precious silk. Orb weavers are very territorial and will kill each other in close quarters, and can exhibit cannibalistic behaviors. That's where goats come in. Goats grow and breed fairly quickly, and a protein produced in their milk can be produced in large quantities and easily extracted. From a quart of goat milk, scientists are able to get a few drops worth of silk protein in a small vial. Four drops of the protein processed from the milk can make four yards of dragline silk. The milk produced by the transgenic goats is indistinguishable from normal milk in sight, taste, and feel. They don't pull the silk threads out of the udder, they milk the goat normally. The only thing different is that their milk contains spider silk protein in small quantities. If you see this milk, it looks and acts like regular milk. There are no silk threads, and they have to treat it to get the spider silk out of it. The silk is isolated from all the other components in the milk, and then the thread is pulled out of the liquid solution, like the silk dope in the spider gland. In the early 2000s, molecular biologist Randy Lewis engineered bacteria to produce the dragline silk proteins. He began working with a Canadian company called Nexia Biotechnologies, and demonstrated that mammalian cell cultures, hamster kidney and cow mammillary cells, can produce spider silk in vitro. Using Randy's patented genes and their own system for expressing genes in milk, Nexia Biotechnologies made the first transgenic spider goats. They synthesized a plasmid containing the spider silk genes, 
with a milk protein promoter, a genetic sequence that tells the cell to make this protein in milk only, not in other tissues. The plasmids were grown in bacteria to make a large amount of copies of it. The plasmid was then isolated and treated to remove all bacterial DNA, leaving only the goat milk promoter and spider silk genes. This DNA was then micro-injected into a goat zygote, a fertilized goat egg. The silk genes and milk promoter were randomly integrated into the goat chromosome, incorporated into the goat DNA in non-specific locations, and as the embryo developed, every cell contained the spider silk genes. The embryo was implanted back into a goat and finally a spider goat was born. They trademarked the extracted silk fibers as BioSteel. Since the first developed spider goats, gene editing technology has gotten much better. New techniques like CRISPR can insert genes into specific parts of the chromosome, instead of randomly, to avoid disrupting existing genes. In 2009, Nexia went bankrupt and the spider goats were sold to a museum in Ottawa. The presence of these goats caused a bit of a stir, as an anthropology professor who took their children to the museum was furious to see that genetically engineered goats were being normalized to impressionable young Canadian minds. Randy Lewis continues the research at Utah State University with 30 spider goats. Randy notes that because of the promoter, they cannot find the silk protein anywhere else in the goat other than in milk, and that the behavior and health of the goats are normal, and cannot identify a spider goat from a normal goat without sequencing their DNA or processing their milk for silk. The USDA and FDA scrutinize these experiments. All spider goats are to be accounted for, and not allowed to spread their spider gene willy-nilly. Randy's research has also shown that the spider gene from his transgenic goats has not transferred to the normal goat mothers during development. Despite being more efficient than spiders, extracting silk from goat milk is not yet efficient enough to produce spider silk materials on a mass scale. Because of this, other transgenic species are being developed to produce spider silk in greater quantities, including alfalfa plants and silkworms. Other companies are looking to break into the synthetic spider silk market, including Craig Biocraft, Bolt Threads, and Spyber. The US Navy has also taken an interest in this technology. They have started funding Lewis's work so they can use the material to develop devices called Maritime Vessel Stopping Occlusion Technologies, or MVSOTs, which are nets made of the silk that will wrap around and tangle the boat propellers of terrorists, smugglers, and Somali pirates to incapacitate their vessels. The military is interested in spider silk for a potential use in the development of a lightweight body armor, and even speculations of weaving silk fibers to make bulletproof vests as a replacement for Kevlar. This is not the only time the military has funded bizarre experiments involving goats. Journalist John Ronson has documented the activities of the 1st Earth Battalion, a small operation devised by a Vietnam veteran that claimed to develop the psychic abilities of soldiers for military and intelligence use. Among other outlandish claims, members of the operation claimed they were able to hone in their psychic abilities enough to stop a goat's heart just by staring at it. Ronson tried to coax former members into showing him this ability, but was unable to witness the feat himself. In 2012, Dutch artist Jalila Eskaidi worked with Lewis to create a sample of bulletproof skin. She used the transgenic silk and leftover skin from plastic surgery to create a sheet of bulletproof material that she shot with a gun. So, to recap, transgenic organisms are formed when a gene from one species is transferred to another species. All genes and all species are made of different combinations of the same four nucleotides. Genes code for proteins, which are the basis for genetic traits. Proteins in all species are made of different combinations of the same 20 amino acids. The insulin used by diabetics comes from genetically modified bacteria, which carry the genes for human insulin. Up to 8% of your DNA is derived from viruses, including genes involved in the development of placenta. You have genes from retroviruses in all of your cells. Spider silk is incredibly strong and elastic, making it a useful material for medical devices and other applications. Farming spiders for their silk isn't feasible, so genetic engineers have developed transgenic goats to produce the silk in their milk. They isolated the gene for dragline silk from spider silk glands, incubated and isolated many copies of that gene from bacteria, and inserted the gene in a fertilized goat egg with a promoter that tells the cell to express the gene in milk only. This produces otherwise normal goats that have spider silk proteins in their milk if female. 
Other species like silkworms are being engineered to produce spider silk as well. Okay, well, that's all I've got to say about that. I hope you liked it. Okay, bye.